Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's per video. We're going to have a look at the weather. There's 10 to 14 days for today's per video. Day 10 will take us to the 14th of March, and we'll be able to set up beyond that with it. So the GFS and ESM ensembles, maybe we'll try and look at the winks. Have a look at CFS V2 for the next four weeks. Gets us to the end of March at the end of the video. I'll get to that for you in a moment. Just say about the first video series are 6 MUK weather forecasts, and we'll also release the EC30 day So check out those two if you'd like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on all today's videos and content. Thanks so much. With gear. That eye's really bad again today, so get a rattle through this and then get offline. Right, let's start off with the strat. Show the sudden stress rate warming event that I've been talking about in the videos over the past uh, couple of weeks is uh, beginning to uh, start now. It's beginning to develop over uh, Russia there. This is the latest GFS uh, 6Z uh, forecast for uh, stress rate temperatures at 10 HPA over the uh, Northern Hemisphere. And you can see the uh, orange colours there appearing over Siberia. That's the beginning of the sudden transfer when we went that intensifies in the next 24 hours over uh, Russia and then starts moving into the uh, North Pole itself into the end of the week displacing the transfer polar vortex by the weekend We've got blue colors here uh, which is the SPV pushed out into uh, North America the North Atlantic and into West parts of Europe by these red and orange colors penetrating into the North Pole and then we see through the weekend into next week, but we uh, maintain those uh, warm temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole, with a further displacement from continuing of the stratosphere polar vortex there being really stretched to its roots by the middle part of the next week. And at this point, zone winds will have gone into reverse. In the extended range, we get a split of the stratosphere polar vortex as well, one lobe of blue spiraling off through America into the Pacific. Another lobe in the Atlantic in between. We've got these uh, green and yellow colours there. So uh, not only a uh, 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 technical SSW reversing the zone wind at 10 HPA 6 degrees north, but also splitting stratospheric polar vortex as well. Another warming focus on Scandinavia there around the 17th of March. That's quite an unusual place for uh, that to happen. And uh, on and on it goes. So it looks like uh, by the 20th of March, the suspect uh, vortex is pretty much done for, uh, to be honest, by this very dramatic uh, warming. And again, we see 100% all members of uh, GFS on some members, but GFS ensembles, we see all uh, members, 100% of them, going for a reversal of zero winds at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north through the course of uh, next week. That is a technical SSW sudden stratospheric warming event. So we shall continue tomorrow. I just don't want to say too much more about that today because we are going to be doing episode 14 of Strat Watch tomorrow, actually. And we'll have lots and lots and lots of Strat in uh, that video. I don't want to say too much uh, more about it on this video. But it's also on course. Stratospheric warming is, uh, is beginning over Russia. It's going to become a sudden stratospheric warming event. A major sudden stratospheric warming event. That's going to be one of the strongest uh, sudden stratospheric warming events on record, I think, this. Um, and that's all uh, going to be developing over the coming few days. Reversing the zone wind and splitting stratospheric polar vortex as well. So we shall keep you updated at episode 14 of Strat Watch tomorrow. Uh, this one from that from EarthNorthSchool.net shows we've got high pressure dominating over and the South Country. The lower pressure is up to North and there's an active weather system uh, through the North and the West Scott bringing heavy rain up. There, central temperature is currently sitting at 4.8. That's uh, just under 1 degree below the 61 to 99 average provisional to yesterday to the 3rd of March. These were GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks Norwich today. The red line is the first year upper air temperature, uh, uh, upper air temperature average for Norwich. Starting off above average with the upper air temperature for next week. Cooling trend through the course of uh, the second half of next week could actually become quite cold, uh, and then hovering close to the long-term first year average into the second half of March, although that does disguise 
quite a lot of scatter. Precipitation wise, looking pretty dry. Certainly for the next week. A few more precipitation spikes in the extended, but of course, that's a long way out and unreliable. Temperature anomaly, six five days. They're coming out above average through all parts of the country. The uh, 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly is cooler, but actually colder, the more southern and western regions. And the 12 to 16 day temperature on Temperature anomaly is close to normal. Seven day precipitation anomaly is uh, driving average in many areas, and the eight to 14 day precipitation anomaly also can be out drier than normal. Right, let's start getting the chart dates. Remember, it's our latest UK mate Euro run. It's looking midnight on Friday. You know, low pressure out to west of the country, becoming a cutoff low off the coast of Spain and Portugal. Lots of wet weather to come uh, for them. And then, through the course of next week, heights raise around Greenland and Iceland with a big blocking area of high pressure starting to uh, get going on the UK map through the early part. We actually bring the wind around to the east, and colder air is starting to dig in there. Uh, next week into the northern half of the country. Is that a tropospheric response to the SSW? Probably not. It's too soon for that. I'd be looking more towards uh, late March for a tropospheric response. But it's interesting, I said yesterday, that while this SSW is going on, we are still seeing... Um, you know, uh, we are seeing signals for uh, blocking to be getting going there. So that is quite uh, interesting. And it's a talking point, if nothing else. Uh, I can't, once again, show you low pressure... Sing away to the south through the weekend, bringing lots of wet weather to France, Spain, and Portugal. Could get some rain from that into the south of the west, heights building around Greenland and Iceland. Eventually, that blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland takes over and brings the wind around to an easterly. And again, we see cold air digging in to the north and the northeast there by the early part of next week. And this other KMA is uh, looking as well. So again, that low pressure sinking down towards Spain and Portugal as high pressure builds towards Greenland and Iceland. Uh, proper old easterly there through the early part of next week. That will start to bring colder air in from uh, the east as well. Then the high pressure centred over to the east. It was cold next week, I think, with uh, some quite sharp overnight frost. Low pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic there by the uh, middle part of March. Your GFS midnight run shows, again, high pressure building around Green and Iceland. Oh, next week, as low pressure sinks down through uh, France, Spain, and Portugal. That's Tuesday next week, with a block around Iceland. The wind's coming in from a northeasterly uh, direction, so cold air filtering in from the northeast. The upper air temperature in cold in all areas through the middle part of next week. Certainly, return of overnight frost, maybe wintry showers in the east. Day 10 finds high pressure over the country, it's looking mostly dry and cold in the extending we start to bring in something a bit milder from off the atlantic there through into the third week of march and we've got high pressure bed back towards uh spain portugal low pressure up towards iceland with winds in from a westerly direction but gfs6 there by comparison again that blocking area of high pressure around greenland and iceland through monday and tuesday bring the wind in from the north and from the north east through the early to the part next week which is looking quite cold that uh, blocking air of high pressure standing its ground up to day 10 as well 14th of march uh, fending off these areas of low pressure in the atlantic upper air temperatures there at day 10 look cold and then in the extended range well low pressure trying to come up from the south, could bring some rain, possibly something a little bit more wintry, into uh, the south as the block begins to weaken a bit. And then, right at the very end of the GFS 6, uh, this is more like time frame. I'll be looking forward to start here. Um, tropospheric response to the strap warm. Um, this is the 20th of March, so by the end of the GFS 6, then high pressure begins to move up towards Greenland, and down comes this northerly. And that could be uh, a hint of a tropospheric response to the SSW. I don't think the developments next week uh, are a tropospheric response to the SW. I think that is just like... Well, we've had blocking on and off throughout winter since January, haven't we? Um, coming and going. So that just... I think that's just like another, you know, another period of blocking that's probably not going to last all that long. Uh, actually, maybe a week. 
Um, and uh, uh, but uh, like the third week of March, that's when I'll be looking to start getting a top of spot. response. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's say nothing about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell friends about that as well. Get to subscribe to show show everyone for doing that. 30 subscribers gets us to uh, 19.6k, so you could give us a sub. That'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. It's pancake day today, so we're uh, playing a tossing. Going to be going on in the towers later on uh, today. How you having a lovely, lovely uh, pancake Pancake day, and uh, also, I'm going to tell you that. Uh, what else am I going to tell you? I don't think I'm going to tell you anything else, actually, have I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be releasing episode 4, that's what I want to do. Episode 14 is Strat Watch tomorrow, and uh, there's not a live stream tomorrow, by the way. We finished Wednesday live streams, so uh, tomorrow's 10 14 there will be uh, a video. That's what I wanted to say. Right, okay, let's carry on then. So, uh, low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic at uh, the end of week, and into weekend. Low pressure sinking down towards Spain and Portugal over the weekend. And then into next week, high pressure building around ice and winds coming in from that cold east to northeast direction with the gem. So, uh, next Next week turning colder as well. Uh, a bread temperature looking uh, pretty chilly there for most places. Certainly return of overnight frost and possibly some wintry showers in the east as well. Keeping it cold into the middle of next week. In fact, even today, Tam, we've got high pressure ridging through the Atlantic Ocean towards Greenland and winds still generally coming in from the cold northeast direction. A bread temperatures at the very least looking chilly, if not cold right let's go on to the ecm finally for chart data so um on friday we've got low pressure to our west bringing showery rain particularly to the west then the low pressure sinking away to south as high pressure builds around iceland brings the wind around to a cold east or northeasterly for the early part of next week looking cold and wintering with winds in from the northeast, colder air sinking southwards and westwards across the country through the early part next week. That's next Wednesday, looking cold, certainly overnight frost would be uh, likely that, probably wintry showers in the east, well, upper air cold in all areas, and it stays cold then up to date um, under that area of high pressure. Remember, cold is comparative, it won't be like the sort of cold we would have got with this in January, but it, for, for, for like early to mid-March, it will be uh, cold and certainly below Average in the extended, where we keep it cold into the middle part of March as well, and then we start to get changed to something a bit milder there up to the 19th of March with low pressure trying to head in from off the Atlantic along the southwesterly flow. This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. So, quite a bit of wet weather in the north with these southwest winds over the next few days, mostly dry down in the south. The end of week does turn more showery though across the England West. I suppose showers could be quite heavy, maybe even a little bit thundery for uh, some southern and western. Western regions. Uh, and then beyond that, well, the trend into the uh, weekend is largely a dry and warm and early next week as well. As it turns cold, we begin to bring in some wintry showers, especially to northern and eastern regions. Could be a little bit of snow in the mix there. And then by day 10, we're mostly dry. These are the options on the table within the East um, Ensemble today for day 10. For the Icelandic Met Office gets us to the 13th of March. 27 members of the East um, Ensembles with high pressure blocking around Iceland and winds coming in from a chilly east or north east direction, mostly dry with that, and then 24 and clinical control and the operation with more of a low pressure influence through the north and west through the northwest Europe, but still cold, high pressure up towards uh, ice of Greenland, and winds again coming in from that northeasterly direction. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, and it will get us to the 18th of March, 26 members of the ECM on side with a trough of low pressure over top of the UK and Ireland, combined the mid-Atlantic ridge, that looks like it could be quite cold and unsafe. Settled and then 25 and clinical control and the operation run with high pressure moving away to the east, low pressure out to the west, and winds going back to a milder southerly or southwest direction. So looks quite cold actually for day 10. I mean, two weeks out, day 14, you know, uh, it's a 50 50 split about whether we're going to keep it cold or turn it milder. And the CFS B2, uh, finally, 500 million bar height on the breakdown to week period. So, first week period takes from the 4th to 10th of March. Next week, with high pressure over and to be east, where it's dry, cut off low down to Spain, bringing love, wet weather for them. And then week two. 
will be the 11th, 17th of March. High pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia. Winds coming in from a chilly easterly direction. Again, notice that cut-off low over Spain and Portugal. Really wet through those areas. Now, week three returns to more typical flow. It's the 18th, 24th of March. Low pressure then back in the North Atlantic. High pressure back to Spain. Winds coming up from a southwesterly direction. And then finally, uh, week four looks like that. It's the 25th to 31st of March. High pressure instead of south, low pressure to the north, winds in for west. No sign whatsoever of a uh, trauma search response to the stratospheric warming there from the CFS. Again, though, I think we have to get the stratospheric warming happened. It has to have happened before the CFS will uh, see it and pick up on the implications of it. So it's a case of watch this space really for weeks three and four. Okay, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you have for doing that when it's drop going. Let us know if you have this and all my videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And uh, don't forget to raise back down. Don't forget to subscribe to 30 subscribers. Get to 96k. So please give us a sub. Make sure you have for doing that. Re wrap through that. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it, everyone. Uh, enjoy the pancakes tonight as well. Love it. Right, tomorrow, we're going to have a 6M UK weather forecast. We're going to have episode 14 of Strap Watch and a 10 to 14 day video will be uh, released tomorrow as well so keep checking back to the channel for more but this one though that's all for now and thanks for watching